today I want to talk about intercompany purchase orders and intercompany sales orders. So when working on a project, sometimes your, your client may actually have multiple legal, in, legal entities. And inside of those legal entities, they may actually buy and sell from each other. And in those examples, it's a good idea to set up intercompany purchase orders and sales orders. So that way in the background, D365 will manage all of your financials for the intercompany postings. It also makes it much easier because the system will make the purchase order or the sales order, whichever one you're not creating uh, for you. So if I'm gonna create the purchase order for intercompany, the system will automatically create the sales order for me or vice versa. If I were to create the sales order, um, the system would make the intercompany purchase order for me. So there's a little bit of setup to this and it can be a bit confusing if you haven't done it before. So I wanna walk through the setup here real quick um, and do an example for you so you can see how it fits together. So in this example, I'm gonna have company 166 is the seller and company 220 is the buyer. So in company 166, I'm gonna go set up this intercompany customer here, and I just called it IC220 for the intercompany that, that I'm doing. So I created the customer just like normal. I gave it a customer group of interco because I want my intercompany postings to happen there. There's also some setup under general ledger uh, for intercompany postings as well. So I'm not gonna focus too much on the finance side at this point. I really just wanna show you the setup of the customer, the vendor, and then I'm gonna create a purchase order and let it create the sales order and show you how that works together. All right, so here again, we're in company 166. Our customer is 220. And then at the top, if I go under general, and then I can go under intercompany. So under the intercompany, under this trade relationship, you'll notice that this is active, and you can see that my relationship is set up here. So I'm in 166 on the sales side, and I'm gonna, the buyer is going to be company 220. Um, I'm gonna kind of click through these. I'm not gonna talk through all the fields, um, but I'm gonna kind of call out the big ones, the ones that I usually set. On this purchase order policies, where it says print packing slip automatically, post invoice automatically, I set those. This print packing slip, not necessarily, you don't need to do that, but I typically check that. And then right here, typically you'll have vendor invoice workflows uh, set up for your all your other invoicing. Typically on the intercompany ones, I wanna bypass that because I'm not really gonna get an invoice and really go in and do all those pieces. So inside of the system, you're still gonna do the invoice and I'll show you that piece here in a second, but this actually bypasses the workflow. The other thing is down here, um, we want the customer information on the header, customer information on the header here for the intercompany and the original sales order. And then if you're doing batches, I like to turn on the batch flag. But again, you can look through these and kind of figure out what you want to turn on and, and not. Under the vendor value mapping, I normally don't change these because I'm not doing anything around the delivery codes or terms or reasons and stuff. Uh, purchase agreement, again, same thing. I normally don't mess with those. Um, however, if you are doing trade agreements, because it could be that you're buying and selling to your intercompany customer vendor and you want to mark it up, um, so you can do trade agreements and discounts and stuff there as well. Um, in this example, I'm going to be passing it across as cost. So if I buy it at $11, I'm going to sell it at $11. So there's no, no change there. Under sales order policies, I always set this order numbering to be company plus original order number, or excuse me, original number. And I'll show you that when we go through here. So for me, this is super, super helpful. The other thing is I wanted to automatically post my AR payment journal. So I'll give it the payment journal and I'll select this flag as well. Um, one of the things I'm a little bit eluded by is there's this flag here that says unit price equal to cost price. If I set that field, it when I did my example, when I was testing earlier, it actually put my sales price at zero. I don't know exactly why. So if I unselect this flag, then whatever my purchase price is will go over as my cost selling price or my sales order selling price. So I don't set this field. Uh, to me, it's worded oddly and I'm not, maybe I just don't fully understand it, but I do not set that field. And then down here again, I do customer header and batch number. And then same for these, I don't 
change anything. I just leave those as is. Um, so we're going to do this again, as you can see. So I'm in 166. I set this up here. And now if I go into my other company, and if I go under accounts payable and all vendors, again, we can see um, our vendor here. So before you start the process, you want to create your vendor and then you're go to your customer or vice versa. But this is the, the configuration. If you go in here, you'll see it's it's already there. So it's not like you have to do the intercompany piece twice, um, but you do have to have your customer set up and your vendor so you can link those together. So um, just one other thing I want to call out here. If you're looking at the customer or the vendor on the miscellaneous tab, you'll be able to see this intercompany is active. And you'll notice that even if I go into edit, um, it's grayed out. Let me get back down here. And again, it's grayed out because you have to get to it from general in our company. All right, so that's the setup. Now let me show you the flow. So again, 220 is the buyer. So I'm gonna go under accounts payable, all purchase orders. And I'm gonna create a new purchase order for this vendor. And I've created a special item and everything for it. Now, one of the things to know is you must have, if you're doing the intercompany, the item has to be set up the same in both companies. So especially especially for um, your product dimensions. So if you're using like style, color, size, or configuration or something like that, it has to match across those legal entities. Because if it doesn't, then whenever you, you can do it in one company, but if it doesn't match in the other one, then you're gonna get an error in the other company. Um, so just know that that's the case. So here you can see that my price is $11. Um, and I'll just order one of these, it's fine. And that's all I have to do here. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to confirm it. Oh, I have to give it a site. Uh, let's see here. So product. Oh, and I have to give it a configuration as, as well. All right. So that's all good. And then we're going to confirm. Now, what's happening in the background is it's creating the sales order. It's creating the sales order that's going to mirror this. Um, so now if we go under here, here under general, or excuse me, manage, intercompany sales order. Now, see, this is PO15562, and I'm in 220. So when I go over here and look at the sales order, you'll notice the sales order number is 220. So see, now I'm in company 166. So that's from that setting where it says to put the company and then the original PO. So it makes it real easy to link those back and forth. So now I'm in company 166, which is doing the selling. So at this point, I'm just going to go to pick and pack and I'm going to pick it like I, I normally would. So just to manually do this, I'm going to go into packing slip and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to pick it. I'm going to say add pick line. I'm going to give it my batch and then confirm pick and this should go to picked and it did. And now I'm just going to say, okay. So at this point I'm shipping it. So now we can see that this is delivered. So now I'm going to go invoice it. And now we can see that it's invoiced. So now when I hit my back arrow here, it's going to take me back to 220. And if I go to my receipt, it's not been received yet because physically it's in transit. So the 166 company picked and packed it and invoiced it and shipped it. So now it's in transit. When it shows up at 220, they're going to go in here and do a product receipt. And the beauty of this is if we go down here and look on this over, you see this product receipt, it auto populated. This is the packing slip number from the intercompany sales order I just shipped, so I don't have to do anything. Then I go down here to update line and I say registration. See, it's ordered. All I have to do is say add registration line and go down here and tell it where I want to put it if I didn't have that populated already, which I do. So I just say confirm registration. And then this is now registered. So if I have 50 batches in that, I don't have to rekey those. It knows what it should be getting. Um, so you just have to do the registration and then uh, we go back and now we can click OK. And now I'm receiving it into uh, 220. All right, so that's done. And then on the invoicing side, I just go into invoice. 
and you again see this invoice here this is the the invoice number from the intercompany sales order to auto populate it so i don't really have to do anything it's got my line on it everything's good all i have to do is click post and you'll notice that i didn't have a workflow there because i disabled it in the intercompany setup all right so we've completed the cycle um, so again you can see this one's invoiced as well so that's the, that's it so once you get your intercompany piece set up then you do the purchase order, it creates a sales order, you pick package ship the sales order. When it arrives at the company that purchased it, then they do the receipt and the invoice and that completes the cycle.